You know, like most people that have a gun channel on YouTube, I get asked quite often, what are good carry guns and what are bad carry guns? So today I thought I'd take a moment to say what I think are the five worst carry guns that I know people to carry. Now, a little bit of a spoiler here before we get started. There's going to be some guns that are not on the list and people are going to definitely say, why wasn't this gun on the list? Well, first off, the R51 is not on the list and people are going to say, why not? This gun was an embarrassment. Well, the reason the Remington R51 is not on this list is because I don't really consider it a gun. I consider it, you know, a joke or a failure or a paperweight, or at the very least a cry for help from a once great company, but I do not consider it a gun, so it isn't on the list. Also, people are going to notice that most of the little kel the small kel the 380s and 9mm, etc., their little semi-automatic guns, are not on this list. Well, the reason for that is... I don't know anyone that carries one. Uh, I know a lot of people say they do, and I know a lot of people that claim that they're great guns, but they're really not great guns. Any gun that has about a 50% failure rate is not acceptable as a firearm, in my opinion. So since I don't know anyone that actually carries one, I don't know anyone that stupid, uh, I'm not going to cover those. Those aren't going to be included in this. If you actually carry one of these guns, I you know, suggest you reevaluate your life choices, but it's not going to be on this list. And I'm also not going to mention things like people that carry like an AR pistol concealed because that's not a concealed carry gun. That's, you know, either activism or mental illness. So I'm not really going to go into those extremes in this list. I'm going to deal solely with guns that I actually know people who actually carry them as their primary carry that I think are really bad choices for a carry gun. Now the gun at number five might surprise some people. It is the Bursa Thunder. And there's really one big reason why I don't like the entire Bursa series. You know, I've seen some broken handgun frames in my life. Now, most of them have been polymer, even though polymer hasn't been around as long as metal. But of all the metal broken frames I've seen, the majority of them have been Bursa frames. And once you see one of them broken and see what the metallurgy is like on these guns, it looks like someone just compressed sand together to make an aluminum frame. It's really not a good product. I would just never carry one of these guns for that reason, so that's why it's number five on my list of worst carry guns ever. Now, number four isn't a specific gun. It's more of a style of gun, but I will name a specific gun in that style, and that would be the single-action revolvers like the Ruger Vaquero. Now, believe me, I like single-action revolvers. I'm a big revolver fan and a big single-action fan, but I don't think they're appropriate for most people for carry guns. I don't think you'll ever have to reload your gun, but firing the gun takes too many steps, reloading the gun takes way too many steps, and is far too difficult. That makes it not a good carry gun. Now, there are exceptions to this. If you're someone that lives maybe on a ranch or in Alaska, let's just say you're more likely to run into a moose in your daily life than you are another person, then it's probably a good choice for you. Carry a big bore single action revolver. I think you'll be fine. But if you're tooling around downtown DC or downtown Chicago or downtown Portland, I really don't think a single action revolver is a good choice for you unless you're also wearing chaps and spurs. Otherwise, choose something else. That's why single action revolvers are number four on my list of worst carry guns. Now the gun that's number three on my list of worst carry guns, I consider more of a novelty gun, and that is the Taurus Judge series. No matter what barrel length or hammer configuration you choose on this gun, I just think it's a bad choice, and mainly because of the way it shoots. Now I have bought one of these, and I actually own one now, but I would never carry this gun for self-defense. For one, it's kind of big and heavy, and two, these guns don't shoot worth a damn. At distances of 20 to 30 yards, I've had the buckshot out of these things bounce off of a plywood target without any penetration at all. And as far as shooting slugs through them, the groupings at 30 yards would be judged in feet, not inches, even from a vice. Add that to Taurus's reputation for limited reliability, and that's a very good reason why I would never carry this gun, and another good reason why it's number three on the worst carry guns list. Now, number two on the list might actually surprise some people, because you're going to be like, whose penis is actually small enough that they would carry one of these? Well, I actually know two people just in my area that carry one of these, so it is going to be on the list, and it's the number two worst carry gun, and that is the Desert Eagle. No matter which type of Magnum Research Desert Eagle you choose to carry, it is a horrible choice for self-defense. Much like the single action guns, maybe if you're in bear country, it might be a good idea, but if you're in a city or an urban area, it's just not a good idea. 
For one, I've owned three of these, and I don't think I've ever made it through a magazine without a failure, hardly ever. They're just really prone to failure. They're not the greatest gun in the world. You've got to keep them oiled up good to get through a magazine, and you know, carrying them around all day means they might not be oiled up good when you need them, especially if it's towards the end of the day. So I just don't trust these guns. I've never been able to trust them anything more than a range capacity, just being able to take them to the range and have fun with them. Plus, they're big, they're heavy, they're hard to carry. Even the lightweight model I have in 357 Magnum is a huge, heavy gun. And heaven help you if you ever find yourself in a criminal court or a civil court trying to explain to some reasonable people why you thought the Desert Eagle is a good carry gun and why you decided to shoot someone with a Desert Eagle. Probably not going to work out very well for you. I don't want to put myself in that position. I don't want to carry such a big, unreliable gun. So that's why it is the number two worst carry gun, in my opinion. Okay, now we are to the number one worst carry gun that I actually know people to carry. This next gun to me is a joke. It's just a horrible, horrible gun. And when you add the fact that even the people that make it, the people that are executives in the company that makes it, refer to this gun regularly as the craptastic jamomatic, that kind of tells you that it maybe is a gun you don't want to trust your life to. It is a little pot metal and plastic piece of crap held together with visible nuts and bolts and glue. And as I have always said, if it's a gun and it's held together with screws and glue, just say no. And that gun is the kel PMR-30. This gun is bad in pretty much any way you can think about a gun being bad. The caliber is not the greatest of 22 Magnum, although I would accept the caliber if it was reliable. It isn't reliable. It is a jam-o-matic piece of crap by the word of people that own it and the people that make it. Even people on the kel forums that love kel realize this gun's got issues. And you wonder why there wasn't that many of them on the market, why they were hard to get, because a lot of people see like, well, if they're so crappy, why are they so hard to get? Well, because they couldn't get any to the market. Because every time they would test fire one with more than two rounds, it would jam, they'd have to send it back to the front of the line. And this is coming from people inside the company. Hence the name Craptastic Jamomatic. Plus, it's not a very small gun. It's kind of large, it's kind of bulky, it's kind of poorly designed, in my opinion. It doesn't hold very well. Just not a great gun in any way. So when you add that it's a subpar caliber, that it is not reliable at all, that it's not a good size for carry, this is just like the worst decision anyone could make for a carry gun. The worst reason being, it's probably not going to fire when you need it, and even if it does, throwing 22 rounds at somebody isn't going to be my optimal choice if they're shooting back at me. So for all those obvious reasons, if you choose this gun for a carry gun, I have to question your sanity. I have to question your IQ at the very least, because this gun just can't really be defended as a carry gun. So that is why the worst carry gun, in my opinion, is the kel PMR-30. So there you have my list. I'm sure there's a lot that I missed that a lot of you out there think that are horrible carry guns. If you got anything you wanna to add to the list, add it in the comment section below. But for now, those are the guns with very little thought put into it that I consider to be the worst carry guns you can choose. real dad.